this question has two parts. In the first part, we have to find the value of the reactance X, that is this reactance, which makes the source current in phase with the source voltage. If the source voltage is V, uh, that is the phasor voltage, and if this current uh, through the source is I, then we want that V and I uh, to be in the same phase. That means V by I should be a real number. Now, V by I is the total impedance across this source. And how much is that? Notice that uh, omega is 400 angular frequency, 400 radian per second. Therefore, uh, the reactance of this inductor will be J omega L, uh, J into 400 into 0 0.1 ohm. That means J into 40 ohm. Similarly, how much will be the reactance of this capacitor? Okay, so uh, we may write that J X C is uh, 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 X C uh, is 1 by J omega C that is 1 by J into 400 into 25 micro this is in ohm and this will be equal to 100 uh, sorry minus j 100 ohm so the reactance of the capacitor is minus j 100 ohm now uh, consider these two parallel paths okay this one and this one how much is the equivalent impedance of these two parallel paths that is 100 minus j 100 in parallel with j 40 okay 100 minus j 100 in parallel with j 40 now with that we have x in series and this 3 ohm resistance in series okay so this plus uh, 3 plus x, this is the total impedance across this source and this should be a real number or the imaginary part of this impedance should be equal to 0. So let me write imaginary part of this number should be equal to 0. That means imaginary part of this which is same as 100 minus J 100. Uh, this is in parallel with J 40. So let me multiply J 40 and then divide by uh, 100 minus J 100 plus J 40. Okay. Then plus 3 plus x, this should be equal to 0. Okay. Uh, yeah. Now, if you simplify this, uh, this will be uh, 200 by 17 plus j 800 by 17 then plus 3 plus x and the imaginary part of this number should be equal to 0. That means this term must be vanished. Therefore, the imaginary part of x should be equal and opposite to this number. And since x is told as a reactance in this question, therefore x must be equal to minus J 800 by 17. Okay. If that is the case, then the imaginary part of 
this number will be zero and therefore the total impedance across the source will be a pure real number and then voltage and current uh, of the source they will be in the same phase there won't be any phase difference between this voltage and the current okay now let us consider the second part of this question here we have to find the value of x when the maximum power uh, is transferred to branch ab branch ab means this branch okay so let us now solve for part b Achha. now uh, how much is the current uh, flowing uh, here that will be this voltage divided by the total impedance okay so uh, this current is v bar divided by the total impedance which we have already calculated earlier is this uh, 200 by 17 uh, plus j 800 by 17 up uh, plus 3 plus x so this is the total current total source current i okay this is i and then part of this current will flow through branch a b and the remaining will go through this inductor now how much goes through this branch a b so let us apply current divider rule at this point so uh, the total current will be multiplied by uh, this impedance j for t divided by the sum of these two impedances which is uh, 100 minus j 100 plus j 40 so the current through the branch a b is given by this this expression now how much is the power consumed by this branch AB? So that will be this current magnitude squared multiplied by 100 ohm resistance. Okay. Now this is to be maximized. This should be maximum. Okay. Now let us uh, see what will make this uh, quantity maximum. Now notice that uh, here this is just a constant okay and the magnitude of this product will be same as the magnitude of uh, this number multiplied by the magnitude of this number. Now notice that this number is again a constant this does not depend on x okay so therefore what we need is to maximize uh, this uh, the magnitude of this number okay so uh, we need to maximize the magnitude of this number that means uh, mod of the voltage divided by uh, the mod of this denominator which is uh, square root of uh, the real part square now the real part is 200 by 17 plus 3 that will be 251 by 17 251 by 17 this is the real part square of that plus the uh, imaginary part uh, okay uh, here x uh, may also have in general some real part and imaginary part so let me rather uh, correct myself let me correct myself uh, so suppose uh, x is equal to a plus jb okay then the total real part of this number will be uh, this plus this plus a Okay, so plus a and 
square of that. So this is the square of the real part. Then plus the imaginary part is 800 by 17 plus uh, B from here. 800 by 17 plus B whole square. Okay. And uh, so here we are assuming that X may be a pure reactance or it may also have some resistance as well. Okay, so uh, we are solving for the most general case. Now, this number is to be maximum. That means this quantity in the denominator should be minimum. And this, this is a sum of two squared numbers. Okay, now notice that uh, therefore we have to make these two squared numbers as small as possible. Therefore, uh, we need uh, that this B to be negative of uh, this number. So B should be equal to minus of 800 by uh, 17. Okay, then uh, this term will vanish, it will become 0, that is the minimum possible value for the square term. Okay, and how much should be A? Notice that A cannot be negative because uh, this is the resistance part of a uh, react of, of an impedance, and the resistance cannot be negative. Reactance can be negative, but resistance cannot be negative, therefore the um, Best value for A is to be 0. If A is 0, then this number will be minimum and we will have uh, maximum power uh, here. Okay. So, therefore, we need A to be equal to 0. Thus, the best value of X is uh, 0 minus JB minus J into 800 by 17. Okay, so this is the best value of X, uh, which is a complex number. Let me write this way. So that's the answer.